So let's start off with an easy one. Okay. You have this incredible career with Everclear. Right. Made all of these records. You've had, I would think, multiple opportunities to do like a solo record. But you're going to put out a solo record for seemingly the first time in your career. For not seemingly the first time. The first time in your career. Why now? Well, I mean, you know as well as I do that Everclear has been my baby from the beginning. Yeah. It's my thing. So it, it, as far as doing a rock band situation... I never felt really a need to do a solo record. I tried to do one once, and it turned into an Everclear record. And uh, I wanted this to be different. I wanted this to be just me playing everything. Mm -hmm. So it's mostly acoustic guitar, uh, uh, acoustic bass, some keyboards, some drums, not drums on every song. Uh, I sing all the vocals. I play all the instruments. Co-produced it with a friend of mine who's a great engineer, producer. And uh, yeah, it's, it's very raw. It sounds like... Almost, it sounds like an Everclear meets Cat Stevens meets Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young. Oh, wow. But with uh, some Elvis Costello in there. All right. I like it. I look yeah. forward to that. One of the reasons that I've always liked you and liked your band mm -hmm. is because there was always this sort of punk sensibility yeah. on those sort of, and not only a punk sensibility in the music, but you as well sort of have a little bit of that punk rock swagger. Absolutely. I've always had that. I've always seen myself in the punk rock aesthetic. Well, but your you buddies with mean? like Jim Lindbergh from Pennywise well, and yeah. those guys, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. We're I don't mean to name drop. No, no, no. We're all suburban dads, you know, right. that live in Southern California that all grew up with a lot of the same music. Um, you know, they, they went a lot more punk rock than I did. I'm older than those guys, so, you know, I, I there's more of a sense of melody to it um, as, far as, as, as far as I'm concerned. But, I mean, underlying, I've always looked at Everclear as a punk slash hard rock band with a singer-songwriter. That's yeah. what we are. Well, that, absolutely. And, and it's not, you know, it's not reinventing the wheel, but it's unique in its own right. Uh, and that's what we are. Yeah, agreed. There are some artists that we have that will play our Wayback show and will not want us to use the phrase way back when we're kind of speaking of them. Oh, okay. You, on the other hand, you do the Summerland Festival. You embrace that. Why not? Yeah, I, I, that's kind of more my question for you. You know what I mean? Like, why do you think some other artists have like a hard time? Like, just people like it. No, they're coming out to see you no matter what it's called. No one, a lot of people, especially people who feel a little insecure about where they are in the world, in my experience, seem to think that if they embrace any, any kind of, um, what's the word you want to use for it? Um, any kind of affection or acknowledgement of the old days um, that it, it me means that they're not relevant today. And to me, we, 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 de we define our own re relevance as people and as, as artists and everything. I feel relevant. I go out and play to people who are singing the words and who are excited to see it and are paying money to see it and it's value to them. That's a big deal. It's not just the money. It's not making the money, but that people will spend the money and they feel like they're getting value for it. Are you a dad? Yes, I am. So am I. Yeah. I'm a family guy. It's not hard to have a... F it's not easy to have a family. No, sir. You want to find value wherever you go. I'll spend good money if I get the value for it, if it's worth what I'm paying for it. And if I feel that that's what we're giving to people, whether it's some sort of nostalgic trip or... It's connecting with a part of themselves that they haven't felt connected to in a long time. What the hell is not relevant about that? Right. That's how I feel about it. Absolutely. And one question in closing, and I hope that it's all right for me to sure. ask you this, but how is your, how's your health uh, overall? You mean the MS? The, the MS, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, dude, I'm, I'm doing okay. About two months ago, uh, actually two and a half months ago, I got an offer from this doctor who writes these nutrition books and bestsellers, and he, uh, he has worked with people with um, autoimmune diseases such, and a lot with uh, RRMS is what I have. Um, and uh, by going on this plant-based diet, very strict plant-based diet, um, uh, he believes that in six to nine months I can start to put it into remission. Wow. So that's what I did it. I, I spent a month out on this thing, spent all this money to do it, and... Uh, Feel great. Yeah. My whole family's trying to do it, and my daughter's doing it great. 
My wife's having a hard time with yeah, the, the yeah. vegan thing. I'll tell you, that's one of the things. My daughter is the mo- is this is going off on a bit of a tangent. How old's your daughter? She's eleven. Okay, mine's eleven too. Man, she is the she's the most adventurous eater, like way more so yeah. than I would ever well, be. Because you brought you and your wife brought her up to be a hundred percent. Did you ever like give her kids food like? I mean, not really. We, you never, know? Did, we never did that. It I was mean, like, you're eating what we're eating. Yeah, hundred percent. If it's too hot, we'll tone it down. But no, you're eating what we're eating. We eat good food. You're going to eat good food. Well, and it's the same way. Yeah. I, I, we joke about it, though, because whomever takes her out on a date when she's 16 or 17, you best not thinking you're going to be getting away with Applebee's with my daughter because she's not going to be having it, man. It's not going to work, man. <laughs> it's no, not my, gonna my daughter loves Indian food, sushi, sushi oysters. Man. You know, I mean, she's got a palate on her. Right. And we built that, you know, but At- she, she's really, really... Like adopting, adapting to this uh, plant-based lifestyle. That's fantastic. Pretty, and yeah, my wife, like I said, she's having a hard time. So she's she's like putting a little. I've I've urged her to put a little animal uh, products, but very little. But it's mostly plants. But I got to tell you, um, I'm I'm just blessed right now. I'm Man. just so happy and so I have MS, but I, I work out. I do physical therapy. I'm doing yoga. I'm, I'm building a swimming pool in my backyard. That's my big project right now. I'm not doing that. Right, here. right. I would hope so. No, I'm out there digging a hole. <laughs> right. Uh, not going to happen. That would be bad. Man, well, Art, it is, you know, this is probably my third or fourth time getting to interview you mm-hmm. over my career. I was so looking forward to getting a chance to chat with you today and see you guys today. Thanks, man. I will never forget seeing you guys with Hagfish at the American Theater. Last day of the tour, you guys are out there rocking your asses off, and Hagfish is throwing, like, lettuce and carrots and all this stuff at you guys. It was, it was one of the, the last, coolest. It was the last show of tour. Absolutely. It, yeah. It was it was it's some great memories and it's great to have you here. Art, Thanks, thank you man. and continued Good success. To see you again, brother. Same to you. Yeah. Same to you. That's art from Everclear backstage way back point fest.